Hey everybody, coming up on Sports Central, Secretary General of the Pan American Lacrosse Association, Andrew Ross with the Lakeland Tropics, and of course, the one, the only, <sighs> this is going to be exciting, because we do have Dr. Henny in the house, noted sports medicine specialist. Stick around everybody for this edition of Sports Central. Everybody and welcome to Sports Central. If you're just joining us, that's because we're just starting. I'm Mark Jackson. To my right, Mr. Hank Longo. Hello, everybody. Yo, oh, man, what a great lineup we have today, Hank. Oh, this and, is going to uh, be a fun show. Oh, it's going to be a great show. It's just like the weather. Oh. I mean, this is just unbelievable. Right you now. know, we should be doing a show at the golf course today. I just think with <laughs> the weather and everything, we should be sitting outside at a green and then maybe hitting a few after the show. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did have uh, Bob Shade on from uh, Cypress Suite. He says the course is in great shape. You can do it out there with yeah, him. Yeah, it you would know, be you great. work on your swing. Yeah, yeah. Your dress, your backswing. Yeah, the whole thing. <laughs> Follow whole through thing. that all, whole all, deal. All the, all the <laughs> movements. Hey, we want to thank the folks at the Hampton Inn Lakeside for sponsoring our first segment here at Sports Central. Well, there's a guy that wears many hats here in Polk County, at least with one, two, three, four organizations, and that's the Tropics, our professional soccer league uh, team right here, hometown team in mm -hmm. Polk County, and Andrew Ross is uh, a guy that really is sitting on a national championship title right now with the outdoor league, and uh, you know, Andrew, the indoor league, which is, you know, arguably the, uh, the namesake original, and then you brought on the outdoor and so on and so forth, great to have you with us. But uh, today, we're here to talk about what's happening with indoor soccer, the Lakeland Tropics. Yeah, I mean, it's been a very, very busy off season. So um, winning the national championship, I think this is the first time I've come back even since we, we won that. Yeah. So, you know, that was obviously a very, very exciting time for, for the organization. And, you know, a, a national league, anytime you're, you're going in, there's a lot of suspense and intensity. And um, it definitely kind of set the bar high for us now going into the indoor season. So. Uh, very, very busy offseason. We signed 11 of the top 25 free agents in the league. Um, basically just took superstars from every other team and said, all right, well, we won it on the outdoor side. Now uh, there's no messing around. This, the goal this season is to win the MASL championship on the indoor side, absolutely. Now, how do you recruit them? I mean, how are you able to steal them away and get them on your team? Well, we got lucky. This was a huge free agency period. Um, you know, every three years or so when contracts go up, all the guys get you know, opened up basically and become free agents. So this was a very, very big period. So um, actually the owner, Dr. Yakovides, I mean, he, he and the head coach really spent hours watching film, identifying what players they want. And then, uh, you know, Chris and I and Clay in the front office go after the players and, you know, we, we reach out to them and we try to contact them and, and find out what they're feeling. And, and here is an interesting situation because we have the weather, right? That's probably the main reason these guys are in Kansas City, St. Louis, Milwaukee, Utica. I mean, <laughs> the biggest thing we have to offer here is, well, you know, they, they always walk out of the arena on the away teams and say, well, why don't we live here, play here? So <laughs> we do have that little bit of sell, but, you know, with no training facility um, here in Polk County, they have to travel to Orlando. So that does become a little bit of a hard sell sometimes. But but um, we just kind of, once you sign one big name, which for us this year was Gordy Gerson, uh, probably debatably first or second best player in the league. Um, he was that first and guy. Where is he from? So he is actually, um, he, I think he's from the Midwest originally from Chicago area, but wow. um, he's leading goal scorer in the league. I mean, he is just a, an amazing player to watch. Uh, he scored six goals on us in the Orlando game last season, the only time that uh, we lost to them at home. So we said, all right, well, we want him on our side now, scoring against Orlando in, in the opener. So once you got him, the rest of it was kind of a domino effect, and everybody said, let's buy into what the Tropics are trying to do this year and, and come down to Florida. Well, hopefully, it's, you know, last year, if, if I remember correctly, the, uh, uh, there were a few injuries. You know, I mean, you guys had quite a few. You know, I don't care if you're playing football, baseball, whatever. You know, you get some, some yeah. key injuries to key players. You know, what the heck do you think is going to happen? You know, but last year was just yeah. one of those years. It was, and that's why we really overhauled the roster this year because we saw that we had five of our top 
10 guys go down, you know, before the first half of the season was even over last year. Yeah. So this year we planned kind of a little more accordingly. We signed, you know, 20 guys to, you know, full salaried rosters and then, you know, some of the rookies on the per game. So we have a, a very, very deep 26 man roster because that's all the league. You can now only hold 26 players. You can't have 30, 32, whatever anymore. So wow. um, you do, you know, and we have a couple of training guys that'll come in. But the goal is, I mean, when you look at our lines, because it's like hockey, so you still have the same lines, you know, six players on the field with the goalie um, so it's it's very very quick in terms of how they're changing over so we made sure to say okay well if our top guy goes down we want that second guy to be a top guy for another team so that yeah. you know but it's very very competitive training camp started this week so the guys are excited they say the, the level of play is very high so we're really looking forward to seeing this team what kind of injuries do they suffer from like leg injuries a lot from getting kicked or ACLs stuff like and that? MCLs because okay. it's turf so mm. um, and it's very very hard surface underneath because it's just concrete laid with you know a five millimeter padding so a lot of times when they're cutting very hard on their it's very very tough on their knees so we see a lot of ACL and MCL injuries so we do have to be prepared for that um, they go through physicals and everything beforehand, so we know if there's pre-existing injuries coming into camp, um, and, and really just wow. try to treat that and make sure that we pay attention. So Bond Clinics, our medical provider, they do an awesome job uh, making sure that our guys stay safe and also this year focus on injury prevention. Yeah, in fact, we're going to talk a little bit about that with our with our next guest, Dr. Michelle Henney. But yes. you know, in the, in the interim, um, your coach is still Clay Roberts. Yes, and he obviously had a busy off season Very as well. Busy. Yeah. yeah. And uh, how is he feeling about the team this year? I mean, is he like, man, I'm ready to go. We're going to rock this. We're going to go undefeated. I mean, what does he think? I, th I, would, I wouldn't say that that's not. That's absolutely the energy, yeah. um, not just with Clay, but in the whole front office. You know, everybody's kind of, you know, grinding away, getting people to be aware of, hey, this all-star team is coming into camp. Now, with that, there's also a target on our back. Mm -hmm. um, there are teams who, you know, would have just put a game against the Tropics, kind of pass them next, you know, last year. But this year, they're like, They'd rather avoid probably playing the tropics because it's we have just such an all-star team that mm -hmm. um, we're really trying to get people to know that and say, okay, last year you know the team did not do well, but a lot of people still came out to the games. Mm -hmm. This year now, not only are you going to still have that same entertaining product, but an all-star team that very well you know could go undefeated at least at home for the very least. Um, so we're just really excited to see them take the field for the first time, which is November 22nd in Orlando. Sea Wolves. Yep. Right? Yep. So yeah. what is it like for the fan to be at an indoor soccer game? Fast pace, high scoring. Um, we focus on, you know, people ask, what are your demographics? And I go, name an age, name a demographic, and I guarantee you that they come to our games. That's really what our philosophy is, is that there's no one that personality, whatever, can come to our game and not be entertained. I have people who don't like sporting events. They will come to our first game and say, okay, you convinced me you were right. That was awesome. It was a ton of fun. Uh, but we try to make it really good for the kids and the parents so that everybody can have you know a good time and just be a family-friendly atmosphere. But uh, it's fast-paced, it's high score, and the guys are really you know ready to play. So we're incredibly excited to see them take the field. Well, your first game is the 22nd of November. Your first home game is when? Uh, December 14th, and that's over at the uh, RP Funding well, Center. we got three weeks then. I mean, that's like... Yeah, yeah, on the road. <laughs> yeah, so we start out the season on the road. That's a tough road out. It is, it is, and it's against Orlando and Milwaukee a couple times. So well, Milwaukee is a hot team. Yeah, they, they, they won it last year, so yeah. that's, that's going to be intense for us. But um, they do have the week of Thanksgiving off, so that was part of the reason that we stretched it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. But... Um, if anything, it gets a couple games under the belt so that when we actually play Orlando for our home opener as well here, they're coming in, they're a couple games in, uh, hopefully that level of play and intensity, every, all the kinks have been figured out so we can have a good result. And so uh, this season goes on for quite a while though. You start in November and go until like March? Yeah, March and playoffs into April and then it switches right into outdoor probably two weeks if not even that after. How, uh, how many guys switch over? Um, this year, actually, quite a bit, Will. We're really mm -hmm. focused on branding this team and mm -hmm. saying, come watch your Florida Tropics indoor and outdoor. Okay. Um, it's going to be one team, one club name, you know, under the Florida Tropics banner. Um, so it'll hopefully be, most likely, maybe 10 or 11 players that, you know, you could see that whole starting lineup. Uh, we'll probably mix in some of the outdoor guys who, they're outdoor players, and we know that. So yeah. they'll come in, but um, the goal is to keep a decent amount of the indoor guys and just really have them be active in the community, coaching, making appearances, and just make this the, the team that the community can get behind it. 
I'm sorry, go no, ahead. Go ahead. So I was thinking, you, you've got this family feud competition against yeah. the Lakeland Magic. What is yep. that? I mean, how does soccer go against basketball? Yeah, well, we were, uh, you know, some friendly competition there. So, um, you know, the arena called up, said, hey, we got family feud coming, celebrity family feud coming in. And um, would you guys have any interest in doing a, a, a round against the Magic? And we were all about it. Uh, we actually both will be donating money to charity. The, the winner will donate $500 on behalf of both organizations to United Way. Hmm. Um, so we're excited about that. But uh, we have our five players picked out. We, you know, made sure they were the ones that speak English and yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe have watched the show a little bit. But uh, we kind of saw the challenge. You know, Shelly and I said to Shelly, are you up for it? She said, yeah. I said, all right, great. We're, we're in too, and let's see what happens. So, so you're playing really basketball? No, it's, it's, a, it's a family feud. So it's like five on um, – like how they you the know, game show. ask the questions in the game oh, show and everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So maybe one day they can. I'm sure we have plenty of players that love playing basketball that they'd love to shoot around on that court one day. But, <laughs> it's uh, not like our married no, life. Game when <laughs> your wife and my wife. <laughs> That's called family feud as well. Uh, well, yeah. you know, we're talking about the season lasting through March, but you know, Andrew, there's everybody that I talk to um, that isn't familiar with soccer gets really confused mm -hmm. because, and I said at the beginning of the show, that, yep. you, that you wear a lot of hats. Yep. Okay, so tell us a little bit about the structure of professional soccer in Polk County. So you've got the Florida Tropics, that's the indoor team. And now the outdoor as well. So to clean some of that up, we did have the different entities and things like that. Right. But from the professional side, it's gonna be the Florida Tropics indoor playing in the MASL, outdoor playing in the UPSL, and that'll be out at Lake Myrtle Sports Complex again this year. So uh, excited, we're undefeated on that field. So that's that's certainly been a great home And a for stadium's us. coming too. And a stadium's coming too. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll leak that and talk about that a little bit more in the future. So we're, we're excited about that and the things that are happening And when there. is the stadium gonna be done? Spring of 2021. So a year wow, and a half. Right yep. the so we'll be going into there. And, and probably, um, actually, I have to say the the goal is to have it ready um, either December of 20, a year from now, or in January of 2021. It's fantastic. that fast. It's going to go that fast. Yeah. Fantastic. yeah, they can just build stadiums like six months to, you know, like Plus, it's nothing nowadays. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. But so it is the Florida Tropics. That's the brand, indoor, outdoor, and then we are we will be bringing back a, a women's team again this year. So it'll all be under the Florida the Tropics, Tropics brand, brand for the senior side. On the U side, every branch, depending on what city it's in, will have its own name. So, for example, the Lakeland Tropics will now be just our youth club main hub here in Lakeland. Okay. Um, and then outside of that, but on the professional side, it's going to be Florida Tropics. So to make it simpler for people, watch your favorite players indoor. As soon as the indoor season ends, they'll be going outdoor to to Lake Myrtle and. Um, hopefully it becomes very streamlined like that. Season tickets can now get indoor and outdoor and things like that. Very so it's going to be an exciting year coming up for soccer. Yeah. I mean, it's just taking off here in Polk yeah. County. It is, and, yeah. And it, arguably, Dr. I, you know, because it's a lot either, easier than saying Yacovitas, <laughs> you know, nobody can pronounce his name and <laughs> nobody can spell it. But, uh, I mean, what a guy that's given back to the community. community yeah, you, know, you, rem so. you know, he reminds me of his Mr. Illich. The, the late Mr. Illich of the Tigers. Mm -hmm. You know, that same give back to the community, get involved in the community. Um, you know, so th that personality is rare, mm -hmm. but uh, it makes a difference, you know, in, in right here yeah. in the, in the community. So Definitely. that's, that's fantastic. One final thing. You've got a, uh, an event coming up, I think it's two weeks, um, called Be Brave. Briefly, what is that about? So the Be Brave is a, is a youth soccer tournament um, that actually focuses on getting, um, raising money for Special Olympics. Um, so okay. it's just kind of a friendly, you know, have kids come out, play, um, and, and raise some money. But really, um, what we try to do is with Special Olympics, try to get the pro guys playing with their kids. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll do some games. And you'll actually see that potentially on the indoor side as well, um, getting some of the kids and, and doing a, we might do a pregame where we bring the players out. They'll mm -hmm. get to play with the with the athletes from Special Olympics. So uh, just a good partnership with their organization. You know, it's just some, some kind of, you know, friendly events, but um, you know, it's just an opportunity to really get those kids to kind of connect and, and feel like they're, they're a part of something bigger. Real quick, people want tickets, people want information about all the events that are going on this year, where do they go? Website, uh, it's fltropics.com. Now through uh, November 10th, the home opener tickets are buy one, get one free. Um, so all the links and everything are right as soon as you go to fltropics.com. 
um, or call our office, which is 863-240-0101. Uh, we are moving into a brand new headquarters uh, in a week, actually, so we're really excited wow. about that. So we'll be off of uh, Edgewood Bond Clinic coming over with uh, physical right. therapy and, and the tropics in one office. So uh, great thing for the community. We're really excited to get in there and just have really a nice uh, home as we continue to establish ourselves here in Polk County. Fantastic. Well, Andrew Ross, wow. Florida Tropics, exciting to have a professional team here and a team yeah. that get, does give back to the community, yeah, is involved so. in the community. Um, that's, that's really an inspiration for a lot of the young soccer players here in Polk County. Well, everybody, we've got a lot of exciting stuff coming up and a lot of stuff to get through, but the Red Ribbon Run coming up here shortly. The Interact Alliance is a drug prevention program in the school. The Red Ribbon Run sets the stage for raising money for the Interact Alliance. Of course, drug prevention, one of our country's biggest problems, particularly the opioids. Um, they have a 15K, a 5K. Pretty cool. They have a kids run, too. We have some footage of that. Check it out. Mark and Hank, we'll be back right after this. Florida are embracing healthy attitudes and behaviors. Everyone's on your mark. And they're off. Good luck. Safe travels to everyone running in Polk County's second annual Red Ribbon Marathon 5K and Kids Fun Run today. The half marathon, 13.1 miles, the only one in Polk County. Uh, started last year, so it's our second year. Had about 600 runners this year, uh, coming from mainly all across the state. We have a few from outside the state. So this is the first year for the 5K. Uh, it was a great run. Uh, you know, they, it was it was a very similar course. The great part about it was the middle schoolers and the high schoolers got to run for free as part of uh, the Red Ribbon series. On your mark, get set, go. Well, we've been doing the kids run for 23 years, and so we've just expanded it to add the 5K and the half for parents and adults, and they make great role models for kids, so we're really super excited that all three events are going off without a hitch today. It's, it's a big um, undertaking. Good run, buddy! Nice job, Sam! Awesome job, awesome job! And that's a tough course, so yeah, I, I was able to do that today, so that makes me feel pretty confident in my training. <laughs> yeah, she's my biggest fan. She's not a runner, but she just, she comes and just cheers me up, and uh, I love those kisses. <laughs> Very good job. Great work. Great run. Florida's not known for hills, but we here in Poe County have a lot. They run Cleveland Heights and along Hallam, uh, as well as uh, next to Florida Southern uh, along Johnson Avenue. So some great sites, but there is it is a challenging course. Michael Conrad! <laughs> I'm very proud that I wasn't the last one, so I'm very happy. Well, I believe in what it stands for, as well as that I'm trying to make myself healthier, so this is the first step, my first 5K. The last four were a little tough, um, 
Lewis just, Duran. My goal time was a little bit faster, but I'm still happy to finish. So um, it's a tough course, um, and I'm very thankful and blessed to be able to compete today. It's a beautiful day, and, and what a great opportunity for the city of Lakeland and the community um, to embrace this half marathon 5K and kids run. Let's go, boys. Let's go, buddy. Hey, how's it going? I'm doing good. This year, Florida Southern College provided the majority of the volunteers. They were out on the course and uh, here at the finish line. But yeah, there are, there are volunteers all over Lakeland right now, uh, making sure that the course is secure and uh, the runners are enjoying themselves. Morning. I just can't say enough about people who are willing to come and give their time. They're not being paid. They don't have a dog in the fight, so to speak. They're just here to help kids and to support healthy lifestyles and to assist us in our mission with um, drug and pre um, bullying prevention. This is something that we want to continue to grow. Uh, it's gonna be a long time race in Polk County. Let's hit for the Lakeland. <laughs> in the house. Hey everybody, welcome back to Sports Central. If you're just joining us, this guy here is we Hank Long. Yeah, it's Hank Long Hank Longo. We, we had, had a lot of fun during the break. There. Yeah, we a little spirited it. discussion over here. <laughs> and I am Mark Jackson, so thanks so much for joining us, everybody. Great uh, interview last segment with uh, Andrew Ross. And just, I mean, to have the tropics here and to have the support that the Bond Clinic and Dr. Ecovitas have provided and a national champion right here in, in professional County, soccer yeah. in Polk County. Wow, yeah, doesn't fantastic. get much better than that. Fantastic. Well, we have a special guest. And before we announce our guest, oh, we want to thank the me. folks at The Ledger for sponsoring our second segment here on Sports Central. Back to you. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Dr. Michelle Henney is our very special guest. She is the team physician for All Saints Academy for Warner Southern University. I'm looking at you like yeah, Warner, Warner yeah, University. Okay. Yeah, Warner <laughs> Acknowledgement. University. You got it. Okay, that's that's <laughs> good. And she's an affiliate physician with the World Series contender, Washington Nationals, up two to nothing over the Astros. It's got to make you excited. Oh my gosh, I'm so thrilled. If we if that's all we want to talk about today, I'm happy. <laughs> hey, and before we get into that, are you skiing in the ski show, Cypress Garden Ski Show, on Saturday night? I wish that I was. The Spooktacular, so, what's it called? That's right. So the Spooktacular yes. is going on on Saturday night. It's at 7.30 p.m. at Lake Silver. And unfortunately, because of my other prior commitments, I will not be able to ski in the ski show on Saturday. No, no. <sighs> I know, I know, because, well, there's there's boxing going on, USA Boxing's doing the a Winter Haven boxing event, and then I go That's straight Marco's from deal, there. Right? That's Marco Fizzini, yep. Yeah. So his, he's got his deal going on, I'll go straight from there to the Warner University versus Southeastern football game. Ooh, wow. that's going to be a good one, too. Oh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a ton of fun. Yeah, you're a busy girl. I enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, boxing, 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 we'll try that one more time, Hank. It's kind of your forte. You, you know, you've done some announcing in that type of yeah. arena before and, yeah. and all of that type of thing. Um, what do you think about this, this event coming up this weekend? Well, you know, I, I, like you get torn between, you know, the events. The spooktacular thing is a fun ski show to go to. They do such a great job. But, you know, getting the exposure of local boxing. You know, we have world champ Andre Berto that grew up here in Winter Haven yeah. and, you know, went on to win Golden Gloves and then be on the um, Haitian you know, Olympic team and then becoming a, you know, two different Federation boxing world champions. So to have this going on in Winter Haven, I think we're going to get to see some young talent that's here in our neighborhood. Well, Hank asked you a question. Uh, we were um, off, camera off camera about FINA, F-I-N-A. And you're also a delegate, which is the doping, International Doping Organization. Tell us a little bit about that. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, so FINA, the, the, they are the equivalent to FIFA. Mm -hmm. and, and everyone's heard of FIFA. We've, we've heard of the Women's World Cup. Certainly they had a significant amount of viewers. FINA is the, what, is the people who swim the equivalent to FIFA. Okay. And FINA, they have an open water swimming event. It occurred in Canada, and every time oh, they have... Nice and toasty. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was during the summer. 
It was during yeah. the summer, and so it was. It was. It was a great temperature. So my role with them was I was the medical and doping delegate. And so as the medical delegate, I was involved with water temperature. We went out the day of as well as the week before and measured the water temperature. When why do we want to know that? Is because when when people are swimming, if they're spending a significant amount of time in the water, they're now going to be losing that body temperature. Okay. And so when you're when you start dropping your core body temperature, you start getting into positions where one, you're not as optimized in participating in your sporting or your activity. And then from there, like when it comes to water skiing, sometimes you start to lose the neuromuscular control and you can go on and have things like hypothermia and more significant injuries in that regard. So, wow. so temperature was a big one, and then doping, working, working with the uh, World Anti-Doping Agency, their agent, making sure that people are participating, not, not utilizing any sort of prohibited substances to allow them to uh, kind of get that edge, yeah. making sure that we're, we're pr practicing safe are sports. Are you still getting people that are doing that? I mean, do people actually get busted for this at these events? So interestingly enough, <laughs> the plot thing there's, well, there's right? certain things I imagine she can talk about, and there's certain things you can't. Right. So, so the things that that I can talk about okay. are that we now collect samples, and they hold on to blood samples because what do we know? We know that as as people have found more and more ways to creatively do well in sports, like human growth hormone like blood doping. We didn't know about it at the time when it was occurring. And we want to be able to look back and say, was this person using something that allowed them to optimize their sports performance. performance in a way that is unfair? And so they hold on to those samples and they can test them at a later time once those tests become developed. These athletes are incredibly smart, and they, they are looking for that edge. And so sometimes it takes science a little bit longer to catch up with them. I just, you know, because we both have competed, and um, I just can't comprehend cheating. I mean, it's just it's just hard to, to think that you're trying to get away with something but like Hank, that. But, Hank, even at, you know, at the international level, you know it as well as I do, that back in our day when we were – at the, at the world level, you knew it was going on. I did. Wow. Yeah, and it um, it wasn't as certain like Michelle, Dr. Henny said. It's certainly not as sophisticated as it is today. But I knew guys that were. Wow. It's yeah. Just I didn't know anything. How you can feel good about Winnie when you? Oh gosh. I mean seriously. Did. Yeah. You know. You know that's a that's that's like their moral compass. Just is not no. It's not pointing in the right direction. So we'll go on to more positive subject. More positive things. Yeah. <laughs> when you ski, when when you ski in the Cypress Garden Ski Show. Yes. Now you're because your Facebook and all this type of stuff. You've got swivel pictures and and all that. What's your favorite thing to do? Is it like doubles? Is it swivel? Is it barefooting? I mean, what's your thing? Oh gosh, that's easy. So my favorite thing to do is to swivel ski. Okay. I enjoy. You can do it as a big group in a ballet line. And that looks just beautiful. You've got a, a yeah, long oh, line of, of ladies who are doing everything in unison. The 180 line is another one. Now you're taking your skills, you're amping them up a notch, so it's a little bit more of a, a small field. Yeah. And, and you get a little bit more attention. And yeah. so <laughs> it is. It's a lot of fun. It, I, and one of my favorite things, I just love working the crowd. Right, because what do they want? You're there for a show. You're not there to see what amazing skills you can do and say, wow, oh my gosh, that, that's really incredible. You're also looking to see, are they performing it really gracefully? Do they make it look easy? That's our goal. You, may, you, you try to make this look as easy as possible. Yeah, well, hands gracefully feathered and toes pointed and all of that stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. I, you know, Mark Voissart, he certainly will get on to you if you're not. Oh, he's, <laughs> he's something else and some of the others too. but. The World Show Ski Championships coming to Polk County in 2022. Now it's been held in the U.S. It's been held in Canada. In 2020, it's going to be in Australia, then back to the U.S. right here in in Polk in County in Polk Winter County. Haven on Lake Silver. What do you think? That what an opportunity we have. This is incredible to have it be held all over the world. And here we are, many organizations came together, put in an application, and really it shows not only the support of the host ski team, 
but the support of our community, the support of our county, of, of so many different groups coming together and really bringing in an incredible, incredible event. Yeah. yeah. For you personally, though, that's that's got to be, you know, we're going to we're, we're going to have to use use the team physician right or the the event position. Can oh, you do that? are you signing me up? All right, I'm in. <laughs> special exhibition <laughs> by Dr. Michelle at the 2022 World Championships that, on, Silver, on Lake Silver in Winter Haven. Yeah, that's a good, that's, that's an exciting time, sort of a, a statement. In fact, I owe a couple of phone calls here this afternoon to uh, some International Water Ski Federation guys about some other world championships now that this one is here. So that, I'm going to have to follow up with that, but I need to talk to you first. Oh, it's just, uh, it's amazing that we're having this here because it's the water ski capital of the world. As you go back through the history in Cypress Gardens when it was the heyday for show skiing and, you know, really what Dick Pope did to, to broadcast that all over the world and all the world records that they set to have the world championships here in, in Winter Haven is just kind of a full circle of how this all began, which is very neat in itself. So whether it's water skiing, whether it's boxing, whether it's swimming, um, all the uh, football, the other stuff that you're involved in. Mm -hmm. So how did you get into box? Excuse me. How did you get into boxing? How did I get into boxing? So. I have certainly had a large background in soccer. Fighting all of her boyfriends off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was, so they, it's, it's a combat sport. Mm -hmm. And my background was not in combat sports. And, and you know, my sister is a, a dancer, an incredible dancer. And, and I had done soccer. And I've, I've certainly been around football for forever. So. This was something I felt that would round out. It, it was something I wasn't as familiar with. And, and you know, as a sports medicine physician, you, you certainly get comfortable. What are the common things you see? You see lots of finger injuries, lots of hand injuries. You're also seeing things like concussions, those, mm -hmm. those being really common things in boxing. And so that was something that I wanted to make sure that I had that within my toolkit. Very that is, good. That is awesome. Have you been to a couple of fights? Absolutely. Oh, good. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's yeah. married, isn't she? <laughs> well, no, no, because it's like exciting. I did a lot of MMA when I was, um, and I'd be right there ringside, and you see these mm -hmm. guys get nailed, and it's like, oh my gosh! But it's, uh, it's exciting. I'm happy for you. I might be bouncing back and forth between the. Got two. a lot of stuff going on in Polk County this weekend. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Great stuff. Michelle, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Michelle. So I'm going to have to wait until the, the Christmas ski show or something to watch you ski again. That sounds good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, great. Thanks so much for joining us. And we're going to have you on real soon. I know Sam is uh, excited about bringing you back on. So maybe you can give us some tips. Talk to us about some preventative medicine. I mean, we could talk to you for an whole hour right. you know, about this type of stuff. And whether it's uh, boxing, you know, basketball, football, whatever, here's some things you need to be aware of. Yep, absolutely. As an athlete, whether you're an amateur, you're a little kid, or you're, you're a pro, you're, or you're a pro, those types of things everybody can use, even if you're not involved in, yeah, in active sports, competitive sports. Yep, absolutely. You'll do that soon, right? Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Great to see you again, and keep up the good work with the Junior League of Winter Haven. Thank you. All right. Well, everybody, uh, we are approaching Halloween. Hank's favorite time of the year. <laughs> he doesn't even have to dress up. Uh, you see, didn't, you I knew. Tell you, didn't I tell you I wasn't going to escape here alive? I knew something was coming sooner or later. But, but one of the cool things, I saw a huge one. I was up in Wisconsin for a few days off uh, back at the farm and, and so on. And this one guy's got this enormous corn maze. Well, we've got a pretty enormous corn maze right here in Polk County on the north side of Lakeland. It's called the Smith Family Farm uh, in North Lakeland. Check that out. But before you do that, check out this footage. PGTV uh, directors and producers do such a marvelous job putting all this great footage and coverage together. Hank and Mark, we'll be back right after this and with Secretary see, General You're going to see Kat Hank Gordon Friesian. That's right. It's me telling the story. <laughs> The helicopter is just getting ready to take off and drop a bunch of candy for the kids here at Corn Fusion.
I am with Colt Smith here at Corn Fusion at the Smith Family Ranch. And Colt, boy, uh, just a great event here for the kids. You've really uh, opened up your ranch so you can have this fun day for these kids over the weekend. And just a great job you guys have done. Uh, thank you. Uh, we, we try to do our best out here and uh, have enough for everybody to do and have a good time. And well, you got helicopter rides, you've got train rides, you've got this big tractor that takes everybody on rides, you've got uh, the, the shooting of the zombies and just all kinds of neat things. And uh, we want to thank you on behalf of the county for this great event that you put on every year. Well, uh, we like to thank Polk County as well and everybody that comes out every year. It's a, it's a really turned out to be a good event for us and everything and everybody seems to like it. So Gives you a little break in the action from the ranch. Oh, uh, this is a little more action, actually, <laughs> than ranching. <laughs> well, thank you so much, and uh, we appreciate it. And I'm going to take you around and show you all the neat things there are to do here at Corn Fusion. The main attraction here is going through the corn maze, and I'm going to take you on that adventure. Hey everybody, welcome back to Sports Central. Mark Jackson along with Hank Longo. That video was one of the reasons we live in Polk County. Yeah. That just, I mean. It's a lot of fun out there. Yeah. I had a great day out there. I actually got lost in that maze for a while. <laughs> and once you get in there, you don't know, you know, you've got to get out. And uh, it was a lot of fun. But uh, if you don't know, it, the and if the sun isn't shining, blast. you know, th then, it, then it makes it. Yeah, it's it a twice nighttime time. would even be more difficult. But a, a, a good event and the, the Smith family doing a wonderful job providing that. Uh, facility for the event. Of course, now we want to thank the Trophy Shop for sponsoring our third segment here on Sports Central. But yeah, and, and corn bring a pretty good price right now. You know, it's uh, um, about an acre of corn is is roughly 750 bucks wow. gro gross revenue right now. Wow. So I can't remember. It's 175 acres on average, 175 bushels per acre, and right now it's about 4.191 or 4.91 dollars per bushel. Well, you know, when you take a little break up to Wisconsin for a little vacay, you really, you know, kind of absorb gotta, it all. I, I just got to get tuned back <laughs> into, you know, real life there. But anyway. Corn or, prices <laughs> and corn per acre. <laughs> here you go. It's a wellspring of information. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares don't get about that anywhere else <laughs> except here on Sport Central. I'm telling you. Uh, anyway. Okay, here we well, go. Well, everybody, this has been a, 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 a great, great show so far. It's about to get even better with the Secretary General of the Pan-American Lacrosse Association, Mrs. Kat Lowe. <laughs> Catherine, I probably should say. But what a position, what an honor to have you right here in Polk County. And you know, your involvement not only you know, around here, but on the international stage is phenomenal. That's amazing. 
Thank you for having me. Glad to have you. Yeah. So an exciting time coming up here for you. Yes. Two yeah. weeks. Uh, yeah, a little bit, right? Yeah. November 14th through the 17th, we are going to be hosting our first major international qualifier event as an organization at the Lake Myrtle Sports Complex, which also happens to be our home and our headquarters, thanks to you, Mr. Jackson. Um, so six countries coming in, uh, women's national teams from uh, Argentina, Jamaica, Mexico, Colombia, Puerto Rico, and the Haudenosaunee Nation. So these are the creme de la creme, the best of their players coming in to qualify for the World Lacrosse Women's World Championship, which will be held uh, in uh, November, uh, actually July of 2021 in Towson, Maryland. Wow. Yeah. That, that's some impressive stuff. You know, and the lacrosse itself, as, as you watch the sport grow internationally, but locally here, it's really, I mean, All Saints has a team. You have yes. a son on the All Saints team. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Ben plays uh, at All Saints, but uh, the program has just exploded mm -hmm. uh, in Polk County just in the years that we have played. So he started playing as a middle school student. Both mm -hmm. of my boys play. Um, Lakeland High School has an incredible team. Bartow, Winter Haven, Lake Wales, Discovery. Uh, so that it has grown, right? You, you've, you've caught me there just with that. I was not aware that all of these high schools yeah. had lacrosse teams like that. It's unbelievable. Yes. Yeah. It's um, so not only has it grown uh, in the high school uh, arena, but we play uh, a very robust club program as well. Uh, so in the summertime, in the fall, uh, and in the winter months, all these same boys, we play in our travel team. And we continue to practice, we play in tournaments, and that's how we continue to grow the game and get well. And you know, through the years that I've been a team mom mm -hmm. for the high school team and for the travel team, we are now beginning to see these boys that we have seen from the middle school program to the high school program now being recruited to play in Division three schools, in Division two schools. And so my goal is eventually we place one in the Division one school, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's very possible. Uh, so I'm just excited that it has, has grown like that. Um, ben had the opportunity in 2018 to play on the Peru national team. Mm -hmm. And so we traveled, uh, and that would be a World Lacrosse Men's National uh, Championship, World Championship, sorry. And he, uh, we went over to Israel, so that championship was in uh, Israel. 46 countries, you know, competing. Mm. And he started all seven games as a 16 year old. Oh my so gosh. So it was an amazing experience, right? And so from there, uh, I went from, you know, team mom for a high school program to team mom for a national program. And next thing you know, I am, <laughs> you know, secretary general for an international organization and an event director for. Um, a championship or a qualifier coming in. So I am just really thrilled. I am happy that somewhere along the line, someone thought I had some skill sets that could be employed. Wow. Um, and I hope I do a good job. And that come November, uh, we execute uh, a good competition. It define what the position of Secretary General uh, encompasses. Right, so really I am, uh, I do the bidding of the president and vice president, right? So we do have a board of directors and uh, our board of directors is actually very, really diverse. Um, so let me step back a little bit and, and really talk about um, our genesis, right, how we came about. So Pan American Lacrosse Association is a third of four continental federations. And so our international governing body is world lacrosse. So you know how Dr. Henny talked about FIFA, right? Mm -hmm. So FIFA is for soccer, FINA is for swimming, World Lacrosse is the FIFA mm -hmm. and you know, for lacrosse, right? That so reports directly to yes. the International Olympic Committee. Yes, right, right. So that's the level we're talking about here. Right, so yes, yeah, so, so World <coughs> Lacrosse is the international governing body of all lacrosse, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at that in, in the org chart, and then from there we have, you know, four continental federations. So there's one in Asia, so the Asia Pacific Lacrosse Union. And then there's one in Europe, the European Lacrosse Federation. So we're the newest one, so Pan American Lacrosse uh, Association. And then there's one in Africa, 
right? Mm -hmm. So for us, though, we have a pretty large footprint, right? We cover uh, North America, Central America, South America, and the Caribbean, right? Wow. Now, currently, uh, of the uh, 15 uh, World Lacrosse members that are in our footprint, 11 are already PALA members. Mm. Fully developed, we will have 51 members within our region. We also happen to be the home of the three top lacrosse programs, USA, Canada, and the Iroquois Nationals, right? So I might be a little bit biased, but mm. I think, right, I, I think we're a pretty cool uh, continental federation. So from there, so we, we, we were voted to exist in January of 2018. Mm -hmm. So July of uh, 2018, uh, there was a small group in, in Israel and we met with World Lacrosse and uh, Bob DeMarco actually met with myself, uh, Mariano Flores of Argentina, and Calbert Hutchinson of Jamaica, and he just kind of said, all right, guys, running out of time, we really need to get this going, right? So we came back, and I just started working, right? And so I incorporated the entity and started talking to you know, all the membership within our region, and uh, we formed our board. So our board had members from US Lacrosse, from Can uh, no, from U.S. Lacrosse, Iroquois National, Argentina, Jamaica, Puerto Rico. So our board is very well represented and yeah. very strong, right? So our president is from Argentina, our vice president is from Mexico, and as secretary general, I assist the two of them in executing our vision. But I am also, you know, the custodian of records. I run a lot of the administrative stuff, and uh, as it happens, I also. Uh, plan and executed with the help of many other board members mm -hmm. um, this event that we're carrying out. It, besides um, going to uh, sports marketing website, I'm listening. <laughs> do you do to find out about their event? Do you have a website that yes, people can go to? Absolutely. www.panamericanlacrosse.org. Right. Dot org. Okay. Dot org. Right. We have yep. a, a a tab that you mm -hmm. can drop down for all our competition website, and we are making this event as friendly as possible from a price point uh, standpoint uh, for all of our fans. Mm -hmm. We are not charging admissions. We're only charging parking, oh. and even then, it's only five dollars. So I don't care if you park it in like clowns coming out of a car, <laughs> right? It's still five dollars. Still five dollars. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> you ever see that? Those, those clown cars? I mean, just like there's a yeah, zillion I, of them come out of there. I, I don't right. do and that. And I wonder, where did you get yours? <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> you know, that's right? a sad thing. I knew it was yeah, coming. You, 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 <laughs> I couldn't so do anything you, about it. You know, you know it's going to happen. <laughs> it's it's going to be four days of amazing competition. And, and if you'll let me, I want to talk about the, the Saturday, right? You can Remember. do whatever you want right. to here. Thank you. Right. Uh, I'm sure with limits, but <laughs> thank you. Right. So on Saturday w at 6 p.m. This is the 14th. Yeah. Uh, no, 15th. 15th. 16th. Yeah. 16th. 16th. Saturday 16th is November Saturday. 16th. Right. Uh, 6 p.m. on field six, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we are actually having a demonstration of the Olympic six on six trial rules, right? So. Right, so right now we are provisionally uh, recognized and admitted as uh, Olympic program, right? So we're trying to get lacrosse back into the Olympics, mm -hmm. right? Wow. And so we have to kind of, you know, reimagine and retool how lacrosse is played. So it's six on six. So at 6 p.m. that evening, Saturday, um, the World Lacrosse is going to help me demonstrate that event. So we're going to pull an all-star team Mm -hmm. from all six countries here. We're gonna pull in all-star coaching staff, right? The World Lacrosse officiating staff will also use that as an opportunity to train their officials, because this is new for all of us, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, students from Florida Southern College who ha also happen to be like my life-saving <laughs> force here. They're my volunteers, they're my interns, right? They're amazing. They're going to uh, be filming mm -hmm. the, the, the game. Um, so uh, anyone who's interested in seeing what this new format is like should come out that, that evening yeah, and Saturday watch it. That's, I mean, that's at Lake Myrtle on Berkeley Road yeah. in Auburndale, yeah. Lake mm -hmm. Myrtle Sports Complex. Yeah. you got to be excited about that new oh, stadium, yeah. too. And, and tell and us about the shirt. Oh, my gosh. And, yes, they need to come out and buy T-shirts because, well, this is our logo. It's on the front. This is our Pala logo. 
But on the back, just you can only buy this at the venue and you know at the games. This T-shirt is des designed by Brittany Imali from Florida Southern College. She plays lacrosse. She's a goalie, right? Yeah. And I just kind of gave her a brief idea of what I was looking for. But the words on this T-shirt are the six core values of world lacrosse in English, Spanish, and Onondaga, which is a Native American language, wow. in the form of a female lacrosse player. Fantastic. This is about the most beautiful T-shirt design I've ever seen. So if you want a, an amazing t-shirt like this, you need to come out November 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, right? At Lake Myrtle. Oh yeah, Lake Myrtle Sports Complex, our headquarters, thanks to Mr. Yeah, Mark yeah. Jackson, all right? Come out, watch games, buy a t-shirt, and support our competition. Wow, what a fun event. What Absolutely. A fun guest you have been. Thank you. <laughs> really, it's just uh, just a wealth of knowledge. And I think we'll probably have really some uh, coverage out there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah we so will be. And I'm going to be very out involved out there, getting everything set up and being a part of it. Yeah, so I will be absolutely. there. Absolutely. He's out there. He's the best. So mm -hmm. it's all good. Cat, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having you're, me. You're a busy lady, and plus those two boys keep run your ragged. So. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to keep your husband straight, that's, uh, mm, that's a full-time job. <laughs> that, that in itself. <laughs> so anyway, thanks so much, and congratulations on your position, and, and welcome to Polk County. I know there's a lot of people excited for you to be here. Thank you very much. You yeah. bet. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody, this is one of my favorite parts one of the of show. One of favorite parts yeah, of the show. Yeah, it's the up close and personal with one of our special athletes. We're going to have to get a lacrosse athlete in here, too. Yeah, we're going to have to do that. Yeah, that'd be good. Well, Norman Babers from Auburndale High School. He's a football player, plays wide receiver, plays cornerback. Well, this guy's pretty special. I think uh, you're going to find out, and you will think so too, right after this. Hank and Mark with more Sports Central right after this. I go to Arbonnell Senior High School. This is my senior year. Um, I play slot receiver, and then like I help, I play on special teams. Then I actually I play punter, like anything to help the team up. I played football actually my first time I remember. I played for the um, Lake Alfred Raiders. They gave me number one, and it was like they gave me number one. Like I know they gave it to me for a reason. And then like it's like I kept going. Like I ain't stop. I kept going. And then I played for the Arbonnell Bulls. And with these guys that I'm still playing with, like R.B. Birds, Melika Lari. We've been playing since we was like little. It was like, I want to say we was like eight years old. R.B. dad, like, I will stand in Oak Ridge right out there. This one from Oak Ridge. Uh, his dad came right there. I was out in the neighborhood with him. We playing basketball. He said, yeah, man, like, I want you to come play for me. He picked me up every day for practice. And it's like, ever since, like, we got a big bun on the team. So it's like, it just carry on. And then people look up to us. So I got a big bun with everybody on the team. Football is like, it's a, it's a way out for me. Like, it's, it's a way out for me. It's like, I can open up bigger doors. I can pay my mom back. It's like, it's a way out for me, so I never stop playing it. If I make it out, I can take care of my people. Like, so it's like, they always been there. My mom never missed a game. My grandma, she be there. She come to games. Everyone always out there support me. And then she tell me, like, I make her proud. Like, when I'm out there on the field, I make her proud. So I'm just trying to pay her back everything. You gotta be a leader. Cause like, people look up to you. Like, even if you don't expect it, like, they look up to you not only, not only on the field, but off the field, they look up to you too. So it's like, leader is the number one thing. And then like the number two thing, you gotta be disciplined, you gotta be coachable. Like if you ain't coachable, then like coaches can't do nothing with you, then like, it's like it's no point. And then the third thing, you gotta make sure you keep your grades up, because without grades, there's no football. Uh, my coach, well my coach, they actually, they helped me improve a lot, because he tell me like, be patient. So like if you be patient, things will happen, like you don't gotta rush things. Like he helped me, and he kept me, keep me on the right track, like he tell me things that I need to accomplish, like not only as being a football player, but being a man. So like my coaches helped me, they helped me elevate a long way. I like when the crowd like cheering for us, cheering us on. I like when we winning. I like when we like the way we the way we doing things this year is kind of different. So like I'm I'm like I'm in love with everything we doing. So it's like I just love the game. We going there. We uncomfortable. We live. We hydrate. We drink water. We come out here. We run. You know we we hold people accountable. So it's like staying in shape is like a big thing for us. Cause if you're not tired, and you see other teams tired. That's like that's I mean it's your time. You can abuse that. I 
know, like, I want to major in, like, I want to be, like, a sports, like, a sports medicine. Because I, like, I want to go back and, like, just, like, show kids, like, okay, things, like, you can do it. So I want to be, like, a coach, sports medicine, somewhere I could be on the field. I got four scholarships right now. My first scholarship I ever picked up was from Southern Miss University. And then my second one was Troy University. Then I have Stetson University and Albany State. But, um, like, they, get, they open up opportunities for me. Like, it leading me to, like, different places I can go play at the next level. Like, it elevated me. After football, hopefully I, like, open up a business, do something good with my life. Well, I know my mom watch, I just want to tell her that we are next. Like, our time coming. Everybody, welcome back to segment number four of Sports Central. Hank Longo and, and Mark, Mr. Mark Jackson. Jackson Thank you, sir. House. Wow, pretty cool. How that uh, you know, that guy I, can play. Uh, I'll tell you. First of all, before we get talking, I want to thank the folks at Hollywood Signs for sp sponsoring our last segment here on Sports Central. Uh, just a great partner with us. But what an education I got on this whole it's women's lacrosse, lacrosse That's uh, world. Uh, you know, qualifying and the teams that are going and how big our federation is as a Pan Am. You know, it's I mean, so that's, it's right here in Polk. It's right, right at Lake here. Myrtle. Yeah, I mean, and it's just boy, like, if you geez, can break really? away to watch that, it's going to be a spectacular event. And I'm excited about it because I will be there, so it'll give me an opportunity to experience it and, and, and do some watch great it. interviews. I mean, there's going to be some really cool people. Yeah, there really will be. And these are the best players in the world. I know, best female players in the world. I know, it's just uh, it's unbelievable. So a lot of fun going on here in Polk County. But hey, let's talk about Pioneer Days in Lake Wales. If you've never been there, you need to go experience this because it really brings you back to when people were pioneers and were coming down here and homesteading and some people didn't know. have the experience to actually live it like you did yeah <laughs> yeah I did actually <laughs> build a log cabin in the mountains chopping down trees and that was quite an experience that was Utah, but, wasn't that Utah uh, Taos New Mexico oh that's the middle of the winter snowshoed up 10,000 feet chopped down trees made a cabin lived in it and skied all winter one of those Oper things I'll never forget. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, moving right along. Well, you know about where I lived in Aspen. Yeah. You know. And in a teepee. <laughs> that was my girlfriend. <laughs> well. That was Connie. <laughs> teepee Connie. Yeah, teepee woman. So anyhow, Let's move some on more good stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> on the back side of... Uh, Aspen Highlands. Ah, beautiful, the mountains. Yeah. Well, how about a perfect game, uh, FL now you got me all Fall flustered. Nationals, uh, a premier baseball event showcasing players from youth age to high school. So that'll be a neat thing going on. It's yeah, then our Lake Myrtle uh, this weekend, the 26th and 27th, we've got an Olympic development, yes, Olympic development program out there, Florida Youth Soccer Association. And it's a system that, that players, male and female, work through to uh, make the Olympic team and, and to get to that level. So that's going to be exciting. You want to see some great soccer this weekend. Head out to Lake Myrtle on Berkeley Road in Auburndale and check the action out because it is something else. And also got some great cross country. Boy, uh, we've had some great cross country performances, you know, in the last week with these kids winning it. And uh, cross country regional meet at Holloway Park on November 1st. And some folks we need to thank, couldn't do it without them, uh, Buelos BSN Hall Communications, Harry Seafood Bar and Grill, and the Country Club of Winter Haven. Thank you so much for your support. And don't forget about that lacrosse event, everybody. 14th, 15th, 16th, and 17th out at Lake Myrtle Sports Complex. The female, the best female players in the world, world yeah. are going to be out there playing and they're going to do an exhibition about the proposed new format for the Olympics. And I believe it'll be um, not in Tokyo, but I think it'll be in uh, in France. And then it comes back to the U.S. in 2028. So Fantastic. Uh, each quadrennium. Fantastic. So, yep, and it's a lot, the uh, local Olympic organizing committee has a lot to say about that along with the IOC. So that's, uh, that's critically important. Well, everybody, don't forget our sister show on WLKF 96.7 and uh, 14.30 a.m. Yep. Make sure you check that out on Thursdays. 
from five to six o'clock, some of the latest and the greatest. Get a lot of call-ins from uh, Major League Sports stars and with uh, all that's going on in the world of football and everything else. Don't forget everybody, our next live show is gonna be November 8th. This is Mark Jackson for Hank Longo and all the staff at PGTV. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you again next time.